Hello and welcome back to my craft room. It's a chilly old day again here in the UK. I'm sitting here tucked up in my <laughs> crochet pom-pom blanket. <laughs> I thought it was a good time to catch up on how I'm doing with my Knit Craft crochet along for Christmas 2022. So Knit Craft is an offshoot of Hobbycraft and what they're doing is releasing each day, each day of Advent, they're releasing a new free pattern for lovely little decorations to um, hang on your Christmas tree. So I did do a video a few days back showing the first one. Day one was a cute, this cute little bee with his Christmas hat on. <laughs> Very cute. And um, I decided it wasn't the best idea to do a video for every day and it's not really my project to share. I just went over a couple of things that I thought if you're a beginner trying to do these you might get stuck on and of course if you've ever got any questions please leave them in the comments I check them every day or pop a post in the uh, Artifati Annie Facebook group and um, either I or someone else will jump in and, and help you if they can I'm sure. Since that first video it's now the 10th of December I've only actually done five let me show you where I've got to I've only actually done these first five pieces but I'm having a, a crafty day with my good friend Trina on Wednesday so I'm going to catch up I'll take all my crochet bag over there and have a good old catch up so what I thought I'd do is just have a look at out of the, the first few that I've done any particular new techniques that I didn't cover in that first video that you know these are really nice straightforward patterns and if you're experienced with crochet not a problem at all but if you're a complete beginner there are just a few little things that if you've not seen them before you it you know you'd, you'd be stuck on and it would be a shame if that stopped you having a go at this lovely project so this was day one the bee this was day two <laughs> I love. they're all much bigger than i was expecting I, I was expecting them to be quite dinky and, you know my tension is quite loose but i don't think it's you know it's not looking particularly loose i think this must be the size they're meant to be and i suppose if they're hanging on a big tree they need to be sizable um so they're all done in double knitting. I've used a three millimetre. They tell you to use a three and a half millimetre crochet hook, but I've used a three because my tension is loose. I stuffed this camera quite loosely as well because I wanted the top to be nice and flat. I think day three was the banana, <laughs> which I enjoyed. Some of, a lot of them are just not related to Christmas at all, but I just think they're going to look really cool hanging on my, my white branch tree thing, which is the, the nearest thing to a Christmas tree we have. This was day three, the... Um, the seahorse <laughs> he's cute now the pattern tells you to use safety eyes but I don't have any and couldn't be bothered going out to buy any so I've just sort of embroidered them on but I do think the way they do it with the with the proper little eyes I don't know if you can see there it does look better really um they're not expensive to buy those eyes I just I couldn't be bothered waiting for them to arrive <laughs> if I ordered them online and I certainly wasn't going out to the shops to get them it's too cold so yeah that's the seahorse and that's day one the bee day two the camera day three the banana day four the seahorse day five day five I think was the one that was the lava lamp and I just I just didn't like it um so I did I invented my own this is meant to be a Brussels sprout <laughs> and I just did the, basically I used the same the bee pattern really but all in green and then I made the I made circles in the same way as, as the as you start the wings in the bee pattern but just kept on going around and increasing to create the leaves of the outer leaves of the sprout in different shades of green and then just stitched it all together <laughs> <laughs> well, I made a little sort of nodule there <laughs> as well. Yeah, I, I'm not sure it's my finest ever design, but uh, in in context, hang, in amongst all of these, I think it'll be fine. I do have my twine ready to attach to all of them when I'm when I'm done as well. I think last time I showed you how to make a magic circle, which is MC. They they are, so MC is magic circle. When you down when you go onto the site to download the patterns, you can also download the pattern notes and it tells you what all these abbreviations mean. And they're talking in UK terms throughout. So what was new in this one? Yeah, I showed a magic circle, double crochet, and decreasing and changing colour. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is that since I did this, I've come across a, a tutorial on YouTube which shows you how to change colour when you're doing 
I can never say the word amiguru, amigurumi, which is this going in, working in rounds like this, without getting this kind of zigzag where the colour <laughs> where the colour changes. Let me show you because this chat will it will show it far better than I can. Hang on a minute. If you have a look at this, so this is Club Crochet, and uh, this guy shows you how to. Do, he shows you two different ways that you can make the stripe the colour change for the stripes much neater so here's how mine is looking <laughs> and here's how it looks when he shows this other there are two ways of doing it one is slightly more tricky than the other um, but definitely worth doing so next time we, there's a stripe in one of these pieces I'm going to try that for sure okay so I just thought I would share that with you um, I'll try to remember to leave a, um, a link to them as well so it's Club Crochet I think I'm subscribed to them um, I think you can you can join their newsletter as well. So that was the B, that was day one. Then it was the camera, the Instagram camera. <laughs> so there were just a couple of little things in this one. So um, you can see there in the pattern it says BLO and you know from the pattern notes that that means work you work into the back loop. I read it as back loop only. I think they just say back loop. I'll show you this quickly. I've got um, just some white thread here just because I think that's going to be easier for you to see so I'm just going to I'm just going to quickly just work up a line of crochet I won't even bother doing it in the round I'll just um just want a little short stretch of double crochet so I can just show you what they mean when they say back loop only I'm just working some double crochets in here I'm really looking forward to my my day with Trina on Wednesday. We're getting together to uh, just before Christmas. I'm going to go out, have a little walk to a nearby restaurant, have lunch out. I spend the rest of the day doing a bit of crafting. <laughs> so this will be perfect to take with me. Okay, so I've got this line of double crochet now. So normally, if I was going to make another double crochet now, or, or any stitch at all, I would go in to the next, um, let me just do that first one because it's a bit more awkward to see, I'd go into the next stitch, I'd go in here, so if I look at it from the top you can see all those little V's, interlocking V's lined up, you'd normally go under both arms of that V, yarn around the hook and pull it through to start your stitch. When they say BLO, or what I think of as back loop only, you don't go through both of those. You go through the one at the back. So it's this only under that you skip that first arm of the V and you just go under the back one. There we go. You just go under there. And this is something I use a lot because if you keep if every row if you go only in the back loop you end up getting a kind of fake almost like a rib so there we go I've gone in the back loop only all the way along there now and sometimes it's to give it kind of gives a a line you can see there where it makes it makes it fold back like that and it leaves this kind of ridge there of the loops that you're not going into so it can help you to shape a piece but if you do it every single row you I, I think I've got a bit behind me hang on so this is a blanket thing I've been just crocheting up with with odd scraps and I've gone into the back loop every time and if you can see you get this kind of almost like it looks almost like a rib It's got a stretch to it and a th and a thickness to it, so I love using it to make like um if if you make a tube of it, you can make like a like a cowl kind of thing because uh, it's it's just it just sort of stretches to fit. It's nice for things like um, leg warmers and stuff like that as well. But in this case, they were using it too. Now where was it? I think it was here. That's right. So um, you can see that line where um you've you've we started off with the base and then and then just worked into the back loop and it creates that kind of line so it sort of helps to shape 
the bottom of the camera there so in, in this case they've used it for more for shaping now another thing they did if I carry on with this little piece I'm going to do one more row quickly work up this row so we've got enough to to show you what this um this next little technique is so what I mean about these it doesn't you know it, it like I said before it's not, it's not my project to share so I'm not going to sort of show you the the whole thing I just think that because you know the patterns are actually quite quick to do they're quite simple to follow but if you've never followed a pattern before and um, if you're relatively new to crochet although it's probably not beyond you at all it might put you off if you're not sure what what certain terms mean okay so I've got myself a little bit of of double a few lines of double crochet there looks a bit funny because I changed it over and started going just into the back loop all the way through that row but that won't matter for this okay so where they've got for the top of the camera so for this this piece ignore that that was done separately this piece here that goes on the top so what they've done is they've done a row of chain they've done 19 I haven't done that many because I don't need to just to sort of demonstrate this um, and then they've done another three or four rows of, of double crochet and then they're saying you'll now work in a continuous round you won't need to turn your work so at this so up to this point we've we've turned so I usually I tend to do my turning crochet before I turn or you can turn and then do it doesn't I don't think it really matters so we're turning our work and working all the way along the row doing double crochet if you ever get lost like this and you think oh where am I supposed to be going you just keep turning it back so you can see that V and you're going under both arms of the V unless it's telling you to go back loop only okay so now in what they're telling me is instead of turning my work again I now won't need to turn and so I'm not going to turn and start working this way I'm going to I'm going to stop here and then for work, row five what it's saying is you're working around all four sides of the rectangle so instead of turning and working back along this way I'm going to work around here around here around here and back up here again but what we're going to do first is put a double crochet in the same stitch for a corner and that counts as a two double crochet corner so that stitch that I've just gone in there the last one in that row was was here I'll take that one back a minute so I've gone into there to make my last stitch I'm now going to go back into that stitch again and do another double crochet and that makes a corner so it's already starting to turn the corner because you've got more than one in the same hole so this is the bit that I thought if you've not done it before you might think what <laughs> um, now how do they word it then three double crochet down the side edge so you've just got to pick up evenly along here it's not always obvious where you need to go but I want to fit three double crochet in here so I'll probably go in here in here and in here so I'm gonna there's not so when you're working normally you know you're gonna go in there and there and there and there and there you haven't got an obvious place when you're doing this but just space them evenly along so I've gone in there let me show you again I've just picked up that bit and I'm gonna put a double crochet in there um, and now I'm going to go in here I think and then I'm going to go in that last bit there so I've done my two I did my two into, into the one stitch there then I've done one two three double crochet along the side and then I'm putting two double crochet in the corner again two and then I'm going to carry on crocheting along this edge so at the moment that's my that was my foundation chain it's a little bit tight there tighter than it is at this end but it's still you you want one in each stitch 
<clears throat> so I've done my corner and I'm going to go in here my double crochet there we go so I'll go along doing one stitch in every single one of that foundation chain like I say, if you if you want a slower demonstration of how to make the foundation chain and the double crochet um, I'll, I'll link to my first video where I made the B. So then we're getting to the end here and we'll go another double crochet into that into that same stitch to make a corner and we'll pick up three along the side again. One, two, three. And personally I find it sometimes it's difficult. I don't like working along side edges like that because it's not always obvious where you need to go but just make sure they're fairly evenly spaced. And then I'm back into two, into the same one again to turn the corner. And I'm ready to carry, carry on going along this line, this, this row. So then you just keep going round and round according to the instructions. And you can see that's where it would fit along the top. So that was that. Um, then it was the banana. Ah, now here, um, yeah, they did the uh, working in the back loop only again. I've put a circle around the decrease because although I showed the decrease last time, I mean, you can see that where I've decreased, so this is where we started in the middle here with the magic ring and, and increased out to there. Then we worked a few rows and then we started to decrease again to bring the the uh, spherical shape back in and you can see it does kind of leave a little bit of a hole sometimes especially um, if you've got a bit loose loose tension like me and you're putting stuffing in there you know um, and you can see there on the banana as well where I've decreased in to, to bring this shape up I don't think it mattered for, for the banana I, I quite like the, it looking like that but I did have a look and I found a tutorial online that shows you an alternative way of decreasing. And I do remember this is what I used to do, I think, years ago, and I changed it. I preferred the, the way I, I, I showed last time. But I think for this, when you're doing these shapes, especially where um, you're not going to see the other side of the work because you're going to stuff them, you're only going to see this, this, this outside edge, this outside surface I'll show you what I mean as, as I go along right so um I think I can I think I can just show you one here so I've just I've just done a stitch in my first one there so normally I'd just go in and make my double crochet here so my usual way of decreasing now that I showed last time is to go I'm going to carry on with double crochet I'm talking UK double crochet this would be single crochet in the states I'm going to put a little conversion chart. I think I forgot last time. I'll put it in the description box this time. So normally uh, to make your double crochet, you'd put your hook in through the next stitch. Yarn around the hook, pull it through. Yarn around the hook, pull it through both loops on the hook. That would be your normal double crochet. The way I showed decreasing last time, I want to make basically these next two stitches I want them to come one so I would go in through that next stitch pull the yarn through and I'm not going to put the yarn around the hook and pull it through I'm going to go straight into the next stitch yarn around the hook pull it through so I've got three on the hook then I'm putting the yarn around the hook one more time and putting it through all three so what I've ended up with is one stitch where those two stitches used to be in the previous row. This um, other way that I'm going to show you of doing a decrease, um, it just it just looks a bit less obvious. It leaves less of a hole, I think. And so this is what I'm going to do in future for doing the um, amigurumi style pieces. So what you do with this way is you go, instead of going just in through both arms of the of the little V, you just go in the front loop this time. So just now I showed you going just in the back loop. This time we're going to go just in the front loop. We're not going to put the yarn around the hook. We're going to go straight in through the front loop of the next stitch as well. And then we're going to complete the stitch as usual. 
So let me show you that again. So I'm not going to go in through both arms of the V. I'm just going to go through that front arm of the V. I'm not putting the yarn around the hook yet. I'm picking up the front loop of the V at the next stitch as well. And now I'm going to carry on and complete as normal. Yarn around the hook, pull it through both those first two loops, yarn around the hook again, pull it through both loops on the hook. And it just makes a tidier decrease, I think. So the only thing is that it does, if you look then at the back of the work, it does leave, because you've only gone through that front loop, it does leave that back loop showing on the other side of the work but that's not going to matter when it's on a, a piece that you're going to stuff like this because that will be all on the inside that you won't see so it's up to you what you like the look of I just think it will be a little bit tidier I will try it in my next few pieces and decide which I prefer next time I'll show you a comparison and, you, and you'll be able to see properly so that was day three um, Day four was my seahorse. Um, so something. Oh yes, there is something new on this. They were also using half treble, treble and double treble. So I thought I'd quickly show you them. So this time they've they've done a magic circle again. So I did show this last time, but this is how I start a magic circle. Okay, so I'm laying this, the yarn over my two fingers there, underneath, bring it back up over the top to make an X shape, not too tight. And then I'm going under there over there and pulling my working yarn, twisting it as I pull it up, pulling my working yarn through that loop. Again, I probably showed that more times and more carefully on the first video. So just, just check out that one if you're not sure that magic circle or magic ring, I always call it. And then to finish my magic ring, I'm just gonna yarn around the hook and pull it through that loop. There we go, so that's my magic ring. Now I'm gonna work my stitches over both um, lengths of yarn. So there's the ring and here's just, this is just the tail. I'm just going to work the stitches over both of them together. So in this case, they're doing a double crochet first. So you do that in just the same way. It's just instead of going into chain, you're going into the ring. So you go into the ring, yarn around the hook and pull it through. You've got two loops on the hook, yarn around the hook again and put it through both loops on the hook. That's a double crochet in UK terms, single crochet in the States. <laughs> so now we're going to do a half treble. So for the half treble, that would be a half double in the States, yarn around the hook before you go in through the magic ring. In through the magic ring, yarn around the hook again and pull it through. You've now got three loops on the hook, yarn around the hook and pull it through all three loops on the hook. I've got that tangled up now. Hang on. Yarn around the hook, pull it through all three loops on the hook. There we go. So the half treble is just a little bit higher than the double treble. So what they're aiming, this is to make the fin, so they're aiming to make a shape, you know, a gradually rounded shape. So the next one is a treble, which is a bit higher still. So for this one again, yarn around the hook before you go into the ring. Go into the ring, yarn around the hook and pull it through. So now you've got three loops on the hook yarn around the hook again and this time just pull it through those first two loops on the hook and then yarn around again one last time and pull it through those last two hoops on the hook. So you can see that that's gradually sloping up. So you've got a double stitch, a half treble and a treble. If you're in the States you've got a single, uh, a half double and a double. <laughs> now the next one it says DTR. Now, again, if you download the pattern notes, um, it will tell you what all these abbreviations are. DTR double treble. So this time, before I go into the magic ring, I'm going to put the yarn around my hook twice. One, two. 
two times around the hook and then I'm going to go into my magic ring yarn around the hook again and pull it through so now I've got four loops on my hook yarn around the hook again pull it through just the first two loops on the hook yarn around the hook again pull it through the next two loops on the hook yarn around the hook again pull it through the last two loops on the hook and that's my double treble or in the states it's just a treble so you can see this is gradually sloping up because the double treble is higher again than that treble so I've got double half treble treble and double treble <laughs> and now they start coming back down again so now I'm going to do a treble so if you remember it's yarn around the hook just once through the ring yarn around the hook pull it through yarn around the hook again pull it through the next two loops on the hook yarn around the hook again pull it through the last two loops on the hook so that's my double, uh, sorry, my treble. Now I'm going to do a half treble, yarn around the hook before I go into the ring, into the ring, yarn around the hook, pull the yarn through the ring. I've got three loops on my hook, yarn around the hook again, pull it through all three loops on the hook. That's my half treble or half double in the States. So the last one is a DC double du double crochet. <laughs> Into the ring, yarn around the hook, pull it through, yarn around the hook again, pull it through both loops on the hook. So you can see that that has made a nice neat arch shape. So it's quite a nice little practice to learn all of those stitches. And then what they do is um, just take hold of the tail of the magic ring that you made and gently pull that up so that it closes like that and then you would fasten off by just cutting your working yarn here leave a long enough end to sew the fin on with and just pull it right through I'll show I'll just show you it's only a little bit of yarn so I'd leave a nice long end for sewing on with and I would just pull it through like that pull it up tight that won't come undone and there's my little fin day six is sushi I haven't done that yet so yeah so they're all the ones um I've got to show you at the moment um so I've got I've got sushi mermaid <laughs> as I say not particularly Christmassy um, there's a couple of others that I don't particularly fancy that I might change as I go along and do something completely different or just adapt a little bit but I quite fancy doing a mermaid <laughs> I think if there wasn't already an angel somewhere else in the along the line I might have made an, an angel instead I love this one the little mini jumper how cute is that there's going to be some different techniques in there probably but I don't think anything like I say none of this is really beyond an adventurous beginner but you just need a little bit of guidance for how to how to do some of these things and sometimes with these crochet alongs you'll get they provide youtube tutorials um to go with them and i don't think they have in this case which is why i thought well i might as well share what i know and as i say if there's anything else you're stuck on just give us a shout now this one is another one i might change so it's it's the watering can one i think i'm going to make it in i'm going to adapt it a bit leave off the spout and make it into i'll make the top a bit I'll make the top look more like whipped cream I think and make it like a hot a mug of hot chocolate maybe with a flake in it that's what I'm happy to do <laughs> um, this is cute a little Christmas star with a hat on I like that um, yeah quite nice same same hat as the bee uh, this is a cocktail it's a bit different and the little donkey <laughs> now I might find that because I used a lot of the grey that I'd got on this camera I might find that for some of these things I won't have the colours they've got and if I have to have you know a pink donkey or something I, I don't really care that's fine with me um I still think they'll be really cute 
I think by next weekend we'll probably get round to getting our Christmas decorations out at last. Um, we don't put a lot up, they're mostly like handmade things, ha painted wooden things and we don't have an actual tree as such but I did make one of those white branch things and I think these will look fantastic hanging off of that. So um, right at the end I will put on, maybe on um, Christmas Eve I'll, I'll post a photo of all of my pieces hanging on the hanging on the branches that would be nice okay well I hope you found that useful I will leave links to the knit craft hobby craft crochet along uh, they've got lots of other inspiring ideas and uh, patterns on I just think it's brilliant that these patterns are free um, obviously they're hoping you're going to buy the the wool from them and you know their wool is it's a good price and everything it's just that I happen to have my own wool to use um, and some of them you only need tiny scraps of, of each colour so uh, yeah so check that out uh, that it's it's a it's a lovely project a really fun project and please do ask if you've got any questions at all please do ask and I'll do my very best to help you if you have a go at this please do think about sharing some pictures on the Artifarty and group on Facebook I'll leave a link to that as well you could also post if you've got any problems with anything you could also post that on there and either um, I'll try and help you I'm sure someone else will jump in and help as well um, I think that's it from me. Thank you very much for joining me today and I'll see you again really soon. Bye!